It's a UFC middleweight division fight. Well, this guy's got some hands on him, DC, and sometimes he takes issue when we call him a boxer because he is an MMA fighter and a well-rounded one at that. But it's hard not to lead the dance and lead the walk with the boxing skills that really are off the charts. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So he can be mad, but I would be happy to be called a boxer if I possessed that set of skills. If I had the ability to fix the target as well as he does. When he's most comfortable, when he's flowing, when the head is moving, when it's never on the center line, when he's landing body shots, when he's following that left body shot with that beautiful left hook, that's when he is most dangerous. It's a guy that for all that he can do in the octagon, at the end of the day, he was a boxer first and a fantastic boxer at that when he stepped into the UFC. And don't sell yourself short, then. I'm trying, but I'm not this guy. Well, this guy has truly made the takedown a thing of beauty in mixed martial arts with respect to yourself and George St. Pierre and the truly great takedown artists. This guy's closing the gap and, and entering that company in the eyes of men. Oh, absolutely, because he's done such a great job of timing takedowns. You didn't see, I haven't seen anyone so good at slipping a jab into a takedown since George St. Pierre. Right. He does a phenomenal job of getting to step one to step two before his opponent even realizes, now he's in on my leg. And if they do get their hips back, immediately he's up into a foot sweep or a headlock or an inside trip. It's just so many different ways for him to get you to the floor that he will throw every single one at you every single time. And a lot of fighters talk about that wrestling maintenance and how hard it is, right, over the course of a career to continue to drill those things. He talks a lot about that, and that's why he's continued to realize success here in the UFC. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a boxer, making his professional debut here tonight. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 185 pounds. Fighting out of Warsaw, Poland, Assassin. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, making his professional debut here tonight. He stands five feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 185 pounds. Fighting out of Warsaw, Poland, Love. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Dan Mergliata. Dan Mergliata, your referee. Ready? Started here, round one is underway, and we've got a striker who is a force to be reckoned with. Tonight, though, he draws a guy who can do a little bit better. And that guy is usually the one that will have the advantage, but we know what a high-level striker is, and this guy is as high-level as we've ever seen in the UFC. All right, going for the early takedown, he gets it, so no surprise he wanted to get this fight to the ground. And that is certainly a good sign for him moving forward in this fight. He felt as if he had a massive advantage in the grappling and the wrestling. He was able to secure that takedown very early in the first round. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by this jump. Big call for punch lands. Now he's getting back in range. In the tie clinch, look for the knees to start. Gets tagged again on the inside. Well, we know knees to be some of the most destructive strikes in MMA, and he's got that part of his game going tonight. He has got the knees going, throwing him in bunches. Oh, what a kick! Under three minutes now to go in what has been a very fast-paced opening round here. He has a commitment to kick it tonight, and it shows. Cutting them down to size with these beautiful leg kicks. Straight punch lands. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? His double leg shot. Oh, how about the slam there? That one cannot 
feel good. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High level grappling could really be entertaining. Stuffs that takedown attempt without issue. Oh, big knee to the body. That'll soften him up. Knee to the body. And now he's got that tie clinch. We'll see what he can do with it. Boy, Ty Plum. Well, you better start doing something defensively. A lot of these knees are landing to the bottom. I mean, it is going to drain you. You cannot stand there while someone has a clinch and it's just driving knees into your body. All right, pretty good series of knees by him there, so make oh. it. Is pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Ten seconds to go. Round two straight ahead. Alright, so there's the horn at the end of the round. Multiple takedowns landed for him over the previous five minutes. And you know what, John? Even more importantly, look at the opponent now. He's afraid to pull the trigger because he's been taken down so many times. Getting taken down is one thing, but getting it, having it happen to you continuously really does make you gun shy. And right now, he's very tentative to let his offense go because of the fear of getting taken down back to the mat again. Oh, misses with the jab. Oh, lands a stiff punch. Shot there, DC, and one more of those, he might be out. I mean, the fight is gonna be over. I can't believe he's still standing. That shot landed perfect. Go! Oh! Big knee me. lands there. Well, these are some excellent ground and pound strikes here, DC. There's an efficiency with which he operates in these situations. He knows exactly when to throw, exactly Hold. It's allowing him to really control the grappling aspect of the fight. There's a song there, right? Know when to hold him. Know when, when to hold him. Yep, absolutely. Go. Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. Trying to pass the guard here, but a nice job by the bottom fighter defensive. Bottom fighter did a fantastic job of following with his hips, making sure he blocked any attempt to get past his guard. Just over three minutes to go. Well, you see all the grappling repetitions here. Just beautiful movement, seamless transitions on the ground. Over and over, these guys are doing things that you see in every jiu-jitsu gym around the country. Oh, reversal here, DC. What a way to switch the position. Fantastic movement by the bottom fighter. Well, his corner was pretty urgent after round one. Little bit lackluster there in that opening round. He has certainly picked up the pace here, and as a result, he has taken control of this second round. Oh, that's a huge strike lands there, and somehow his opponent's chin held up. His opponent's chin held up, but you do not want to be on the receiving end of those types of strikes. Well, it's there you go. There you go. Fighter trying to control posture, unable to do so. And now he's in a lot of danger. He's got to grab that head or he's going to get blasted. Gets up again here, but hurting. <laughs> Big punch lands over the top. How's he going to follow this one? Hardy gets the takedown now, DC. We'll see what he can do in this advantageous spot. He set it up beautifully. Let's see if he can now take full advantage of it. Side control now. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Well, any time you are in a ground fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. Fighter trying to pass here, Ooh, but gets denied. Gets denied, great job, great job. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. All right, 
right, let's check out some of the action DC and how about the punching acumen by that fighter in that previous round. He does not waste anything. He does not loop punches. Everything's tight. Everything's precise. He's a sniper. We always talk about how he's a sniper. He is a sniper. And it showed in that exchange that allowed him to drop his opponent. Last round, guys. You ready? You ready? Third round underway. That's a huge shot there, DC. I'm not sure how he stayed up. I mean, when you can hit with a shot like that, to stay standing and show it's tough when you're tough. Lands with the right hand. Working off his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Oh, lands with the ground and pound strike. Well, you know, I don't like the gi very much, but I have an appreciation and a healthy one for these type of transitions. You can tell he's been in a gi at some point in his life with the way that he moves so freely. I'm skipping jujitsu next week, too. <laughs> now the guy's got on bar. He's attacking it on him. He's going to attack on bar here. You gotta recognize that when a guy starts to put his feet on your hips, you gotta move him off, and you gotta cover. You can't be off the table. Exactly. Oh, nicely done there as he escapes back to his feet. Well, we wondered earlier why there weren't as many body strikes. He's making up for lost time here. Shot to the body connects, and that bears watching. That's gonna hurt this opponent. Oh! if your gas tank is this low, you gotta find times to try to preserve that energy and, and get yourself back to a place where you can actually go. Oh! He needs to one back. Let's take a look at the replay of the knockout just a moment ago. It was right hand after right hand after right hand. Finally, he found the one that hit the exact sweet spot that ended his opponent's night. Here now, Bruce Buffer with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Mergliana has called a stop to this contest at three minutes, 17 seconds of round number three. Declaring the winner by 